Sean. Ladies and gentlemen, easy aces. Dear, you've either got to stop watching television or go on a diet. What's television got to do with dieting? Look at you stuffing yourself. Give a man a knuckle and he makes a pig out of himself. Do you have to go whole hog? Why don't you let mother go half? No, thanks, Janie. Every time I eat caramels, they stick to my teeth and I can't open my mouth. Oh, have a caramel, mother. Oh, come on, dear. Put the candy away. I'm putting it away as fast as I can. Now, uh, let's watch this television program. Boots. Boots. Isn't that awful? B-O-A-T-S, Boots. Jane, this is a story about the sea. Oh, I read the book, 20,000 Legs Under the Sea. 20,000 Legs. Jane, first, it's not boots. 20,000 legs and not one pair of boots? Jane, it's boats. It's about the sea. Well, why don't they say so? Why do they always complicate things instead of simplicating them? <laughs> the sea. The raging, seething sea. Oh, let's listen to this, Jane. From time immemorial, man has tried to conquer the angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep. The angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep. That's pretty, isn't it, dear? Yeah, it's pretty corny. Today, man travels the sea in luxury, in floating palaces such as these. Man has come a long way in his never-ending efforts to conquer the angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep. Well, this is where I came in. But it was not always thus. thus. This luxury liner is a far, far cry from the primitive boats with which man once hoped to conquer the angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep. Oh, brother. This is the kayak, primitive boat of the Eskimos, made of the skins of seals. Makes a nice boat, doesn't it? That'd make a nicer coat, wouldn't that, Mother? Uh, mother struck a caramel. See the kayak as it slithers sleekly over seething seas. Oh, that's pretty. I bet he can't say that again. And yet, even though these kayaks slither sleekly over seething seas... What do you know? He did. They are a far, far cry from the speediest of all seagoing craft, the motorboat. Intrepid men like Gar Wood and Kay Dawn have attempted to conquer the angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep. Oh, no. No, no kayaks these. A far, far cry indeed. They're crying as the announcer. Gar Wood is first in his trim little speedboat, Miss America the Ninth. Gar Wood is first and his boat is ninth? How does he do that? He's got a long whip. Oh. Kay Dawn. With Miss England, the second is second. Well, that comes out better. Yeah. But will these speedy motorboats conquer the angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep? No. no. And yet these speedboat pilots are a far, far cry from the dreamy, romantic gondoliers on shimmering, moonlit Venetian waters. Ah, Vienna. Vienna. Can't you just hear the slumming of the guitar? The slumming of... As the gondolier serenades his Venetian blonde. Venetian blonde. Sounds kind of shady to me, Jane. Isn't that romantic, Mother? The shimmering moonlit waters in Vienna and the sewage canal. Well, uh, she's still with the Carmel. Uh, Jane, maybe you ought to get your mother a glass of beer to wash it down. But it's a far, far cry from the schooner of yesteryear. <laughs> it sure is. Once man sailed the angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep in these four-masted schooners. And the history of their deeds is written in blood on the sails of time. What is this guy talking about? Pirates sailed the seven seas in ships like these. The three greatest pirates of them all, Jean Lafitte, Captain Kidd, Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan? He wasn't anywhere near the pirate Milton Burrow was. Nor Ralph Kiner. No. no. Oh, dear, I could watch these pictures all day. They make me so seasick. You like to watch them because they make you seasick? Yeah. Don't you understand, dear? It's like when you're away from home, and you see something that reminds you of home. 
Well, that makes you homesick. Well, I like the sea, so this picture makes me seasick. Uh, Jane, would you like a caramel? Oh, well, that reminds me. Are you all right over there, Mother? Oh, I'm fine now, Janie. Did you get the candy out of your teeth? No, but I got my teeth out of the candy. Isn't that awful? What are those birds, dear? Seagulls. They hang around the docks and buoys. It's the old story, boy meets gull. <laughs> you like that, huh, Jane? Yes, he's got a long whip. <laughs> you know how far back I said that? It is a far, far cry. It certainly was. From the sailing ships of old to this luxury yacht of today, J.P. Morgan's fabulous pleasure yacht, the Corsair. What a contrast indeed from that primitive little kayak which set out to conquer the angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep to this three million dollar seagoing castle. Three million? That's a lot of us, isn't it, dear? Well, that's the way millionaires are. They like to sit around and talk about their yachts. J.P. talks about his yacht. Vanderbilt talks about his yacht. Yachtada, 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 yeah. And there she goes sliding gracefully down the ways into the calm, serene waters of the briny deep. Calm and serene? Why isn't it angry and turbulent for J.P. Morgan? It wouldn't dare. No. And here, the luxurious seaward. This one belonging to Cecil B. DeMille. Cecil B. DeMillions is more like it. Yeah, all those odds. Mm, some people can afford floating castles, and I can't even afford to go to a doctor to see about my kidneys. Well, I'm no millionaire, Mother. I can't afford floating kidneys. Dear, stop it. Well, you know, I'm just kidding. If your mother wants to go to a doctor, I'll be happy to pay for it. Happy. If it makes you happy to be happy, you be happy. I'm happy. Here, Mother, have another caramel. No more caramels. But I will have some of the soft centers. Oh, dear, sit down and watch this program. Okay. And here is another boat that has tried to conquer the angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep. Briny's back again. This is the Endeavor, owned by a British sportsman, T.O.M. Sopwith. T.O.M., why doesn't he just call him Tom? Why does he spell it? Well, children listen to television, Jack. His goal was the America Cup. With his sleek sailboat, the Endeavor, he tried to win the American Cup year after year without success. Well, if at first you don't succeed, Endeavor, Endeavor again. Yeah. The sailboat is a far, far cry from the four-masted schooner. But no child's play this. Look at that boat list. Must they show these kind of pictures? I don't know if it's the sweet candy or the briny deep, but something doesn't agree with me. Who does? Mother, if you don't like the picture, just turn your stomach, uh, just turn your head. Oh, look at that rough water. <gasps> Bless you, Mother. Mother, can I get you something? Yeah, maybe a glass of hot milk with a raw egg in it. Oh, bon voyage, Mother. Go lie down and take a little nip, Mother. <laughs> and now we come to the Normandy. In its day, a titanic leviathan of the sea. Titanic leviathan. The Normandy conquered the angry, turbulent waters of the briny deep <laughs> by making its maiden voyage from Cherbourg to New York, 2,971 miles, in four days, three hours, and 13 minutes. Is that so fast, dear? I know a girl who went to England by plane. She had her breakfast in New York. Lost it over Newfoundland. And arrived in London in time for dinner. Mm, which she couldn't eat. In two days, two million people visited the Normandy when it docked in New York. Massive gilt bronze doors opened on the main dining room. Remember the main dining room. The kitchen had a 20-ton range and could roast 768 chickens at one time. This swimming pool held 50,000 gallons of water. A drop in the ocean. Yeah. The Normandy, which was built at a cost of $60 million and was 1029 feet long and had 12 decks, is a far, far cry from the Normandy we see here, now ravaged by flames, a victim of the angry, turbulent fires of the briny deep. Oh, briny's getting hot. And as the Normandy sinks slowly into the setting sea, hmm. we say, 
Farewell, O Normandy. You are but another victim of man's eternal struggle against the angry, angry turbulent waters, waters of, of the, the briny deep. deep. Yeah. And yet the palatial Normandy was a far, far cry from these tiny boats fashioned by the tiny hands of tiny boys. Conquering the angry, turbulent waters of Central Park. Janie, can you come here a minute? Oh, is that mother? Yes, it is a far, far cry from your angry, turbulent mother in her never-ending struggle against her stomach. Oh, dear, stop. Hmm, Carmel, that's for mother. Another Carmel for mother. Mm, another Carmel. 